When you're old, you laugh at certain things. Have you noticed? Nobody is telling us to buy houses. Come to seminar to learn how to buy houses. No. <laughs> Why? Because they're cheap. It's only when things are expensive, about to fall, that everybody tells you how to do it. Because they've already got houses they want to sell to gullible people. Rich people don't tell you how to be rich until they want to milk the poor. Very few people know how to be rich. They won't tell you. When they are rich and they've taken all the money they can and they want extras, then they will tell you, come to my seminar. And I will tell you how to be rich. When they're already rich and they want to take the little you've got. Somebody says, it isn't the person who is looking for gold who is rich. It's the person who is selling the shovels for you to dig for gold. He can't lose because he will sell to every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Only one or two will strike gold. But the majority will not strike. But the person selling the tools will always have steady income. If you go and... Forgive me, Pastor Ayo Daniel, but if you go and read books to find the secret of power, you will find that it is those who are no longer in power who write books about power. The day Samson revealed his secret, that was the day he lost it. There's such a thing as God being jealous. When God gives you a particular condition for which if you fulfill those conditions, his power will continue to flow. He wants you to make it so secret, people wouldn't know the source of your power. The moment you begin to reveal it through books and seminars, you're now telling them how you have done it. You finished. So when somebody has finished, then they're selling you books on what will no longer work. Because what God has done through them, he will not repeat. It's a tailor-made condition that God himself will write for you. If you don't believe me, continue read, read books about everything else. But how to get power? I stopped reading them. That's why I'm telling you. I've read many. <laughs> I've read many. Three steps, seven steps, 41 steps, 14 steps. Even one man said if you bought his magazine and you keep one leg in the air and you... You go around seven times and you hit this thing. On the, you have to do something silly, then the power will flow. I tried it. <laughs> I'm ashamed of telling you I've tried many things. I've gone to America to find people who will want... I used to fast and fast and fast, no power. Then somebody says, you don't need to fast. So I went to America to find out. I just wasted my money. <laughs> I've been saved, anointed, baptized in the spirit. Went to Bible school, did everything. And somebody says, they've only been saved two years. They never fast. When they fast, they have ulcer. And yet there's no miracle. One single miracle I didn't see. It's only what happened somewhere that we have never seen. 
that miracles happen. Right before your eyes, you'll never see a single miracle. <laughs> but everywhere else they've been, there will be miracles, except where they are now. <laughs> and God forgive me for being... There are many people, they just tell porkies because they've lost the power. If you want power, go directly to the author who knows you and knows what he wants to do with your life. It's not something that we can mass produce. Power is not to do with having power. Power is to do with having nothing in you. The more empty you are, the more God fills you. Now, nobody can teach you how to be empty because the way somebody is empty may not be the way you will be empty. You need to be empty without losing your personality. So what we need to find out are the price of God's miracle working power for you. God will tell you. Now, let me give you an account of how a struggling, a struggling local uh, pastor in America uh, became America's man of faith and power. It was while pastoring my first church, an Assemblies of God church in Colorado, that I definitely made up my mind that I must hear from heaven and know the reason that my ministry was not confirmed by signs and wonders. I felt sure that if I would fast and pray, God would in some way speak to me and reveal to me what stood between me and the miracle working power of God in my ministry. Day after day, I went into the prayer closet, determined to stay until God had spoken to me. Again and again, I came out without the answer. Then one day, I determined to stay right there on my knees until God answered. Or I would die in the attempt. Now that phrase, I was determined to stay right there on my knees until God answered or I will die in the attempt is the crucial phrase because sometimes until we are driven to desperation, God is not convinced that we are determined. Many of you, when you pray, if God doesn't answer, you think maybe there's another way or God wants to use somebody else. But if you will say like this pastor, if the Bible says the... Um, Power will follow the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I don't see the power following my ministry. If he could say, I will find out why. Or I will die in the attempt. I'm willing to do the same. You may not get the answer. For some reason, God knows how determined you are, even before you start to pray. If God thinks you have um, a plan B, or you are very blasé, you don't even care if you fail. There was a, a, a lady who had terminal cancer. People prayed for her, and she wasn't healed. Medical science couldn't help. So a, a man of God by the name of Gordon Lindsay, who had written many, many books, 
said to her, well, you're going to die. Doctors can't help you. And nobody's prayer is working for you. So why don't you fast? Fast until either God heals you or you fast yourself to death since you're going to die. So she began to fast and said, Lord, I won't stop until you heal me. You heal me or you take me. Nothing to lose. That lady was healed. You know, there is certain faith that come up when you are fasting. Up to a certain level. Faith comes. And if you're desperate enough, you'd be amazing what God can do through a person who will not take no for an answer. So this minister said, Lord, I'm going to find out. What is it? What is it? Everything you say in the Bible is true. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Holy Ghost has come, no power. What is the problem? Show me, Lord. What? What else do you want me to do? So he began to fast. And I don't know about you, fasting is not as easy as it sounds. First, time. Secondly, conviction. Sorry for some of you, or shall I say most of you, who have work. Many of you have work. Not be so? Yes, you have work. For people like me, I gave my life to Jesus at the age of 19. I went into the ministry at the age of 19. God told me not to do any more exams, not to go to medical school, so I've got nothing to fall back on. So if God doesn't use me, and I find it is very hard to be a laborer, because I've tried, it is very hard. <laughs> yes. I don't know how laborers do shovel. Just to bend. For five minutes, I tried to bend to pick strawberry. All I made in a whole day was two pounds fifty. All the other people on the farm came to help me so they can go home. Because without me finishing, they couldn't pack up. So they came to help me to fill my box. That's why we, I could make two pounds fifty a whole day. While they were picking, bending down, I, I sat on a crate. And I very hard. It's easier to use your brain than to use your bra. Especially if you're not used to it. Very, very hard. So, people like us, no choice. It's either God blesses me or I will die in the attempt. There's that kind of separate, uh, desperation that sometimes makes you successful. If you, if you are praying, but you know, if God doesn't use you, uh, uh, after all, you're just a volunteer. You, you know, you're a chemist, you're a banker, you're a lawyer, you're a solicitor, you're a, a doctor. You're just helping the church. Ah, it's not your father's business. You're not a reverend. Even though they call you one, it's just because they want to dash you some, just to make you feel good. You're not a reverend, you're a doctor. You're a banker called Reverend. <laughs> but some like us, we're Reverend from day one. <laughs> no, no, no other job. No miracle, no bread. <laughs> Everything, mortgage. Petrol, council tax, everything depends on me being anointed. No anointing, starvation. There's nothing else I've learned. Nothing. I know nothing else. No qualification. And I know feet bend. (laughs) 
So all these things matter when you pray. Do you understand me? Yes. If you pray like a volunteer, if you pray like somebody who is doing it because you want to help the church, you're not desperate, you're not passionate. There is no determination that you must have this thing because you have a sense of destiny. God will answer you. Believe me, God won't answer. Because sometimes, are you listening? You tell God, I'm going to fast for three days. You're not serious. <laughs> if you're going to fast, you fast until you get the answer. Are you going to say, I'm looking for work, and I'm going to look for three weeks? If you are broke, you look for work until you find work. Isn't that right? You're not married. And you're looking for a wife. Um, I will look for a wife three weeks. No wife for three weeks, I give up. You'll be in trouble. Most things in life that we want, we don't give time. We look until we find. Even if you are not happy with the one you, when the time is running out, you will take anyone that is left. <laughs> it's better to have a bad wife than no wife. <laughs> At least I have somebody I can fight with. Somebody says, oh, I, my husband give me a horrible time. I said, many people are looking for people to give them horrible time. <laughs> this is where I come to fasting. And this is where it becomes interesting. Let's look, let's go to Luke chapter 4 and look at fasting. Once you understand fasting, <clears throat> I believe you will have a more powerful ministry. Oh, by the way, it's, your, it's in your own best interest to have a powerful ministry. You know why? When you are used by God, it means you have angelic hosts behind you. You have area boys who are ready to fight your battle at your command. And when you are a fighter for God, you have less problem. Because Satan will, look, will go for the weaker. That's why we people who are ordinary, we pay more taxes than millionaires because they have huge, um, clever lawyers. One tax person give us the secret. He says, rich people don't pay because we can't afford to chase them. Inland revenue is looking for money. And they're going to pay a lawyer a million pounds to chase a rich man. They will go for a person who's working for NHS. <laughs> They'll go because that one can't even afford to pay, never mind pay a lawyer. There was one man, he did, when we used to live in York, a very, very rich man um, he, in York, he had a Rolls Royce, he used to park outside his uh, house. And they decided it, it was near the city center. So they put yellow line in front of his house so he couldn't park in front of his house. As they were doing the yellow line, it was still hot. And he took his shovel and he scraped the yellow line off. <laughs> scraped it off and it's against you can't prosecute a person for breaking the law if there was no yellow line in front even though it is designated there should be a yellow line so he scraped it off and then he told the council take me to court 
I have more money than you to waste on this case. They left it. <laughs> Their budget doesn't allow them to fight the case. <laughs> Hello? If the devil knows you have power behind you, he'll go and trouble other people. So it's in your best interest to have power. You have less problem. It's better to have less problem to have more victories. You agree? So let's look at uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4. <clears throat> then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days, he ate nothing. And afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. Third day, uh, verse 3, and the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. For 40 days that Jesus was fasting, Satan tempted him. But on the 40th day when he finished fasting and he became, he became hungry, that was the end of his natural ability to go without food, Satan spoke to him. Satan did what? How did Satan speak? Because the Bible says later, afterwards, angels ministered to him. So we can put two and two together that angels must have appeared to him. In the same way, Satan must have appeared to him and then tempted him. But Satan obviously wouldn't appear to Jesus as Satan. Do you realize that Satan, check this out, the most person that resembles Jesus more than anybody is Satan. The most Christ-like person is Satan. That's why he could pretend to be like an angel of light. That's why he could pass himself off as the Antichrist. If he wasn't like him, except not exactly, only about 5% different. So Jesus must think after being so powerfully met at the baptism, when he fulfilled all righteousness and he was baptized by uh, John the Baptist on the river Jordan and the Holy Ghost came on him like a dove and he was do done what? He was led by the Spirit. Would you be led by the Spirit only to go and meet the devil? Would the, would the Holy Spirit lead you to go and meet the devil? Hello? When you've done everything right, all your experiences have been positive, they've been spiritual, They've been God-centered. God and then you went to the final phase. You will expect greater and higher things. So when the devil appeared to Jesus, it wouldn't have been like a devil. Before the real angels came, the false angel appeared. What's the point of the devil appearing and saying, Jesus, I want to tempt you. <laughs> of course, Jesus, get away, who born you? Jesus 
must have been thinking, wait a minute, what's going on here? What, what kind of angel is my father sending to? Is it my father who's trying to see if I will bend, if I will change? I think what made Satan come out was because Jesus did a complete fast. And from that time, Satan knew who, the, who was the boss. And I say, if you are going to do anything for the Lord, you start where Jesus started. Jesus never started his ministry until first and foremost, he had an encounter with the devil. You can say he did an MOT. Satan tried hard to make himself centered, to make him go after his own empire. And he, he succeeded where Adam failed. So from that moment, Satan knew that Jesus was his boss. But even for 40 days that Jesus was fasting, Satan did not appear. And until Satan appears and he challenges you and you defeat him, you haven't begun a ministry. Somebody says, well, if Satan is lying there in, in hell somewhere, why should I bother him and challenge him? Well, if you don't challenge him, then he's not going to take you seriously. He's not going to be able to say to you, Jesus, I know, because we've had an encounter, and he won. Paul, I know, because we've had an encounter, and he won. Who are you? If you go to a medical school and you get all the degrees in the world but you are not certified by the British Medical Association, you can't practice, at least not in England. You may have to go to some village somewhere outside of EU. You can't practice here. Somebody must attest that they know that you didn't just cram what you did to pass an exam. You're a true medical practitioner. In the same way, Satan needs to test you. Now, one of the reasons we fast is to bring out Satan from that hiding place so you and he will face each other. Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> if you are going to work for God, and you're not going to be an amateur. You need to know the enemy when you see him. Because he's so much like an angel of light. You need to be sure who is appearing to you in your dreams. Who's giving you revelation. Who's giving you gifts. If you don't know the enemy, you can't fight the enemy. You may end up being an agent of the enemy. So what should we do? We should learn to fast. Now here comes the rub. 